This is from the Gospel of John. Some time later, Jesus showed himself to his disciples once again by the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, Simon Peter and Thomas, the twin, were together with Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. The sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were also there. Simon Peter said, I'm going out fishing. We will go with you, said the others. So they started and got into the boat. <clears throat> but that night they caught nothing. Morning came, and there stood Jesus on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you caught anything? They answered, no. He said, shoot the net to starboard, and you will make a catch. They did so, and found they could not haul the net aboard, there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that, he wrapped his coat about him, for he had stripped, and plunged into the sea. The rest of them came on in the boat, towing the net full of fish for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards. When they came ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish laid on it, and some bread. Jesus said, bring some of your catch. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to land, full of big fish, 153 of them. And yet, many as they were, the net was not torn. Jesus said, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus now came up, took the bread and gave it to them and the fish in the same way. This makes the third time that Jesus <laughs> appeared to his disciples after his resurrection from the dead. So, we wish you a very happy Easter. Those of us physically here on Bear Island have just come back from the Standing Stone, where we were able to sing Alleluia at the rising of the sun. And we now come to the end of the retreat, and we will be accepting Jesus' invitation to have breakfast in a few moments. But we wanted to uh, just connect with those of you who are with us online and this has been a smaller physical group here uh, this year on Bear Island, a very wonderful group from many parts of the world, but uh, a much larger uh, community of people on the retreat uh, from around the world. The number of fish uh, caught in the gospel story there was 153, which was a was meant to symbolize the number of known countries in the world at that time. So it meant everybody in the world. Um, so I think we're more than 150 countries around the world now, but uh, the community uh, has spread, the meditation community has spread over the years. And uh, we're able to communicate now and to enrich each other uh, with the wonders of technology and I wanted to thank two faces that you don't normally see who are staring at me but behind the camera uh, Adriano Massi from Rome who's going back to Rome in a few minutes uh, who is our director of IT and Leonardo Correa who is uh, from Brazil who's our director of communications so thank you both very much for your work. So, the story we just uh, listened to is one of the stories of the resurrection that we'll be reflecting on in Easter time. The story isn't over yet, of course. We've, we've been here this week to, to prepare for this day uh, for the 
close reading and a close reflection together on the passion narrative, on the story of Easter. Yeah. And um, I think uh, it certainly has been a grace for me uh, to be able to share that time and to give it, to have the opportunity to go deeply into these, these, the meaning of these scriptures and to see how they relate to our own lives and to our meditation. Uh, but the story continues, the meaning of the story continues to unfold. Uh, liturgically, we now enter into Eastertide, and then that leads us into uh, the uh, Pentecost, and then after Pentecost, the Ascension. So all of them rolling stages of the, uh, of the life and influence of Jesus. And then eventually we get back to ordinary time. And in a way, we call it ordinary time, but it's extraordinary time because of what we have learned and what we have uh, entered more deeply into through these reflections on the scriptures. And through linking our meditation to those scriptures, reading them in the light of our inner experience, um, but also allowing our lives, our ordinary lives, to be the teaching, to be the point of revelation. Um, Jesus is standing on the shore of Tiberius in that uh, passage we just read. Uh, and the disciples had been out fishing, hadn't been a good night. A very ordinary day, ordinary work. They'd gone back to their ordinary jobs. And they had good days and bad days, good catches and no catches. And Jesus is standing there, and in the midst of their ordinary lives. And that's how we meet him, and how the resurrection appearances unfold in our own lives. Not in a great flash of light and, and majesty, as it were, but in very ordinary, subtle ways. We are able to see, to perceive his presence active in the ordinary fabric and texture of our lives and the work of our lives. And that invitation where he, he cooks the breakfast for them, somebody's cooking some porridge for us here, uh, outside you may have heard it during the meditation. Um, and his invitation to come and have breakfast, the, the ordinary meal of the day. So we hope that uh, sharing in this time of retreat has been of uh, depth and, and value to all of us here uh, and to all of you joining us from um, around the world, 150 countries around the world. So we wish you a very happy Easter, a very good breakfast if you haven't had your breakfast yet, and uh, may the joy and the peace of the risen Lord be with us and to fill our lives with his life and his compassion. Okay. Very good. So I think we've got some porridge.